Hello everyone and welcome back to the Banterweight Boxing YouTube channel with me, your host, Michael Waite. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you've all had a good week so far. I thought I'd make a quick video about the upcoming fight between Lomachenko and Devin Haney. This is a massive fight in the lightweight division and we really have been kind of blessed with the lightweight division in general uh, recently in, in boxing. We just had the Ryan Garcia versus Tank Davis fight, which was massive. Did about 1.2 million pay-per-view buys. And now we've got Lomachenko versus Devin Haney, which is, you know, equally such a great fight with two massive names. It's almost, could it be a passing of the torch uh, fight? Could it be the end really for Lomachenko, him passing on the torch to the rising star of Devin Haney? Or could the old kind of veteran stand strong and uh, and uh, keep keep the titles or keep moving forward in the lightweight division? Me personally, as a as a bias, and I think I have to say this before I get into the um, before I get into the video, um, I would personally love to see Lomachenko win this fight, and that's because Lomachenko not only is one of my favourite fighters and one of those fighters who kind of really drew me into boxing, uh, watching his career. Uh, as a you know, as an amateur and moving into the pros and just doing the unimaginable, winning a world title in his third fight, and also just his style, just made me a massive Lomachenko fan. But also, uh, I feel like if Lomachenko wins this fight against um, Devin Haney, we're more likely to see the Lomachenko versus um, Tank Davis fight, which is a fight that I just wanted to see for probably about three or four years. Um, you know, ever since. Tank kind of came onto the scene and they were both fighting similar opponents and beating them in very different ways. Lomachenko with his uh, incredible kind of punch output and, and uh, footwork and stuff. And then Tank Davis doing it with an equal level of kind of boxing IQ, but doing it by knocking them out in a Mike Tyson-esque style. I just thought stylistically they both would make for a great fight and just, yeah, super interesting to see. So personally, I'd like to see Lomachenko win the fight because I feel we'd probably see the Tank Davis fight afterwards. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd highlight that just in case that bias starts to seep through into the video. But anyway, for the rest of the video, I think I'm going to go through the kind of strengths of both the fighters and their, their keys to winning and then end off with my prediction. The bit you're all waiting for, the bit you're going to make your money off at the bookies, my prediction for the fight. So let's start with Lomachenko. Well, I've already given him a bit of an intro and already probably kissed his ass quite a bit, but I'm going to continue to do that. Lomachenko is a very special fighter. Um, obviously, I think for him, his keys are to keep the fight, um, you know, at that kind of closer range. I think that's where Lomachenko is, is his best. He's able to get that ridiculous punch output going, throwing combinations of five or six punches and being able to just, you know, show that movement and kind of, you know, put, bring uh, Devin Haney into the matrix and, and bamboozle him. However, I'd say one of Lomachenko's big weaknesses, well, it's difficult to say, it's one of his greatest strengths and one of his biggest weaknesses, which often is the case for a lot of fighters in boxing, is uh, another one of Lomachenko's strengths is his ability to download the data. And that's where he takes his time to work the fighters out, understand their, their weaknesses and then target them, especially later on into the fight. Now, that's a great skill to have. One that Tank Davis is actually very similar at doing. Um, he's also very good at, you know, taking his time to learn the weaknesses and then, um, and then uh, you know, press on on them and, and take advantage of them. However, sometimes the Wi-Fi signal for, for Lomachenko is a bit slow. You know, he's not using BT Infinity to download the data. It's, it could be TalkTalk. Talk. Uh, and if you've ever used TalkTalk Talk in the UK, you know, you know what I'm talking about there. And sometimes it can take Lomachenko a bit longer to kind of work his fighter out. And while he's working them out and being a bit more passive, he's losing rounds. And we saw this, the greatest example of this was the Teofimo Lopez loss for, for Lomachenko. It took him about probably to around to round six or seven to really warm into the fight and for him to feel comfortable to start really throwing his combinations and seeing him, you know, when he's kind of just... He's almost, you know, just kind of in a flow state, isn't he? But Lopez, kudos to him, didn't allow Lomachenko to do that. Um, and it, it just took Lomachenko time. And before you knew it, Lomachenko was down five or six rounds 
going into the championship rounds. And you just can't take that risk when you're when you're fighting at this level, you know, with the you know at world title level with these serious, um, with these serious opponents. And I fear a similar thing could happen in the Devin Haney fight. Even for Lomachenko in his most recent fight against Ortiz, nowhere near the level of uh, Devin Haney, he still obviously won that fight, but still took his time in the earlier rounds and lost, you know, and there were rounds lost there, slow to get going. So I do fear about that for Lomachenko going against Devin Haney. So that's his big, one of my big worries. Looking at Devin Haney as a fighter, I think, um, you know, stylistically, he's, a, he's an incredible fighter to watch. Um, he's, you know, very dimensional. I was going to say, what, his, what's the opposite to one dimensional? Very dimensional, I suppose. Uh, he's got loads of kind of tools in his arsenal. He can fight at long range. He can take advantage of his physical attributes. You know, he's obviously about he's about 510 or something like that fighting at 130 you know he naturally he's a lot bigger fighter than Lomachenko he he's easily going to move to that 140 um kind of uh, weight category uh, as soon as he probably can so he's got the range on Lomachenko but also he can fight up close he when I've seen it you know when I saw him in the Cambosas fight what I liked about him is he there's always something different to his game. You know, he's, he's always come, you know, when he's starting off his combinations, he, it's never, you know, you never see a repeat of the same thing. Um, so I think he's got, yeah, he's got many strings to his bow, which is, which is a great advantage for him going into this fight. And I think it will also cause Lomachenko problems because, because of this kind of diverse nature of his style, it's going to take Lomachenko longer to download that data. And I think that's going to be a problem for him because for Lomachenko, because at this weight class where Lomachenko is really pushing his body physically, you know, this isn't his natural weight, lightweight. You know, he's he he's fighting guys a lot bigger than him, and he's not going to be able to hurt Devin Haney the way you know he probably could to fighters in a in a lower weight class. He's not going to be able to rely on knocking Haney out in the championship rounds. So as a result, if he loses those early rounds, I don't think it's going to be an easy night for him. He's not, you know, he's got to make sure he banks those early. I think with Devin Haney, um, you know, he's coming up against a guy who's obviously very experienced in Lomachenko and and it can easily bamboo, bamboozle you. I think Loma, what Haney probably has to do is, you know, make sure he ties up any time Lomachenko gets close, make it a bit of a dirty fight in that sense try and bank early rounds when Lomachenko is figuring him out um, and also, you know, try and keep that fight rangy. He's got those physical attributes. He's got the 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 um, the reach on Lomachenko and I think uh, that will pay, play a big role. Um, I think as well, if Devin Haney sticks to his usual game plan of being diverse in the ring, showing different angles and not being one-dimensional, it will, you know, add to to um, Devin Haney's game plan of being difficult to figure out. And even if Lomachenko does come on strong towards the end of the fight, it won't be enough. So it will be interesting to see what happens in, in the fight. I think, you know, Lomachenko needs to kind of back himself a little bit. You know, he's got he's got the amateur pedigree. He's a great fighter and he's got to trust his instincts. He's, he can't rely on getting all the information he needs within that 12 rounds. He's got to go in there with some kind of um, preconceptions about what Devin Haney's going to do. However, I feel my prediction is the young man is going to is going to do the job. I think this is Devin Haney's time. He's had um, good kind of, tune, not tune-up fights, but good fights against Cambosis, which have kind of brought him into that world-class category. And I think this is a good time for him to take the Lomachenko fight. He's been active. Um, and I think Lomachenko is probably coming over the hill now. And yeah, I'm picking Devin Haney to win by decision. Uh, that would be probably my prediction. I just think he's um, going to be able to bag enough rounds early on and still kind of um, when the onslaught inevitably comes from Lomachenko, I think he'll be able to survive it. So yeah, I'm picking Devin Haney by decision. Um, I think it's going to be a super close fight on the scorecards. Um, I don't see if a fighter getting knocked out, but yeah, that's how I feel it's going to go. 
but I would personally still like to see Lomachenko get the business done. But yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, who do you think is going to win? It's a really tough one to call. It's not an easy one to call at all. Uh, but a great fight for boxing, another massive clash in that lightweight division. So much going on there with, you know, these stars coming, you know, really coming, uh, coming to the top of boxing. It's great to see. But yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.